Hi, this is Hedvig. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to pronounce my name, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how to pronounce my name. My name is Hedvig, b b b not wo 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 in Swedish. But if you're an English speaker, you already have this name, and you call it Hedwig, probably. And uh, for English speakers, it's a head and a wig, and you're set. Um, if you really want to pronounce it the Swedish way, then be my guest, but you don't have to. I don't care that much. Uh, then you would say Hedvig. Now for my last name, which is Hvilgård, um, that's a bit more tricky because you first got the, the fricative Hvilgård. And then you, if you want to do it super like me, like exactly my Swedish, you do E Hvilgård. And you probably are deleting the ah. I've noticed because people ask me this a lot, so I think about how I say it. So I'll probably do Hvilgård. And then we got a, a just a, a voiced velar, g g, and then you go over to the vowel, which is an a with one dot, which means it's o. If it had two dots, it would be a. If it had no dot, it would be a or a, a or a. Um, but it only has one dot, so it's o. And then after that, you got a retroflex coming up. So you say god. We have a couple of retroflexes. We have bot. We have fosh. We have barn. We have um, svart. We have bot. I already said that one. Oh, there's more. I can't think of all of them now. They don't sound exactly like retroflexes in uh, language spoken in, in India, for example, but they're still in the retroflex place. So it's retroflex. Now, on top of this, you if you want to be super duper as a Swede, you want to do the pitch accent correctly. So you want to do Hedvig Hvilgård. Um, but it's up to you to do whatever. My name has cognates in many of the European languages, mainly uh, the Germanic languages. It's an old Germanic name and uh, it's a female name despite having so many consonants around. Uh, it's together from it's uh, two roots that both mean fight and battle and things like that, and it's a female name. So, it usually when you get interpretations of what names means, you get something like the woman who can fight, or something like that. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah. So in Slavic languages, you get something like Jadviga, or something like that. She Jadviga was actually is actually a saint and was uh, the ruler of Poland. So it's pretty awesome. There's also been some princesses in Sweden called uh, Hedvig. Um, probably some other badass ladies. Well, there's the owl in Harry Potter, that's what everybody keeps saying. As if I wouldn't know. That's the nerd and somebody called Hedvig. I know. Uh, there's also the um, great film and musical Hedvig and the Angry Inch, which I recommend everybody to watch if they like weird rock music. No, good rock music, just kind of bland and um, odd stories about transgender stories and war and things like that. Um, where was I? There's also Hedvig in uh, French, I think you can be called Hedvig too, but then you call, they come to H's in the beginning of words, so they do something like Hedvig. Uh, the Dutch also do something like Hedvig or Hedvig. I uh, can't remember which one. Um, people frequently devoice at the end. Uh, so Dutch speakers would sometimes call me Hedvig. Actually, even English speakers would. Um, we don't have final devoicing in Swedish in the same way, so uh, it's a bit new to me to do that. But it does happen. It happens so frequently that it actually also happens in people who only communicate with me uh, via text. So I get emails where I have written, you know, best, comma, Hedvig, and then hello, Hedvig. Um, and I kind of like that, because it means that they're phonologically aware of my name. Um, other than that, I don't have that much to add. Hvilgård, Hedvig. Uh, the first of my names is Anna. You don't have to worry about that. Um, I have a third name, Hunnes uh, uh My father is not called Hunnes as a first name. His last name is a fossilized patronym, Hunneson. And he also usually had the nickname for a while, Hunne and he wanted my his name in there somewhere so 
they made it into a patronym based on his nickname, so Hunnes dotter, dotter's daughter. Um, Skigård is a quite new name, it only goes a few generations back. I'm technically not blood related to the originators of the name, but uh, anybody called uh, Skigård is my cousin or sibling or aunt or uncle or something uh, in some way. We're not that many in my generation, actually a lot of the descendants have other names by now, so uh, me and my siblings are some of the few in our generation called it still. Yeah, I think that's it, unless there's something else. Oh, you might want to know that khiv is, is an adjective. It means uh, fragile, transparent, see-through, something like that, it seems. Just me judging by the way it's used. It was the name of a lake. The lake was called Khiden. Uh, N is a definite article, so the Khid, the Khid lake. I think this is a cognate of uh, sheer in English. So imagine a lake being sheer, if you will. And imagine there being a farm, a house by that lake, that's the gourd. Uh, so that's how you get to the gourd. Uh, and if you have a kind of boring name like Nilsson and Passion, and you have a farm name, you might just switch to your farm name to make yourself a bit more interesting and unique and distinguishable. And that's probably what they did. Um, I think that's it for now. Um, I'm glad people are interested in my name. It's a recurrent question, so I thought I'd make a video <laughs> explaining it. It's kind of self-absorbed in a way, but um, since people keep asking, I thought I'd just say it. So if you want to pronounce my name, my name is pronounced Hedvig Kvigård. If you want to say Skirgard or a Hedwig or a Jadviga or a Sheer Farm, probably wouldn't remember to react to that one, but uh, most other things I'd probably react to, so just go ahead. It's fine. Uh, so, Hedvig, really good, signing off. <laughs>